All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lehigh Valley Passport to History's monthly virtual program. I'm your host, George Wacker with Lehigh Valley with Love Media. If you hear my air conditioner in the background, it's because I have it on Arctic and I'm up in the attic office. So I hope that doesn't bother you too much. We hope you're staying cool out there. This series airs live on third Tuesdays, and we take about 30 minutes or so to highlight a different theme and discussion from the night's participating historic sites. Lehigh Valley Passport to History is a partnership of 50 historic sites and resources in and around Pennsylvania's Lehigh and Northampton counties. The group helps promote local tourism and shares historic activities, events, tours, and exhibitions throughout the valley. Lehigh Valley Passport to History is funded in part with funding received through the County of Northampton's Hotel Tax Program, the Lehigh County Tourism Development Grant Program, and the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Visit lvhistory.org for more information. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Lehigh Valley Made Possible. Find out more at lehighvalleymadepossible.com, Molly's Irish Grill and Sports Pub in Bethlehem, and of course, our good friend Michael Bernadin at Remax Realty, hashtag find Mike. Tonight's program explores the remainder of Lehigh Valley Passport to History Month. We're looking at uh, lvhistory.org right here. And we're going to be talking to a few individuals this evening representing their organizations, including Larry Oberly of Atlas Cement Memorial Museum, Stephanie Tashner with the Whitehall Historical Preservation Society, Megan Pildes of National Museum of Industrial History, and last but certainly not least, Beth Twist Houting from the Schwenkfelter, Schwenkfelter Library and Heritage Think Center. Thank you guys all so much for uh, joining us this evening. We're really excited about Passport to History Month. How's it been going for you guys? Pretty good so far? So? Pretty good. Good. Yeah. So in the interest of time, I want to make sure that everybody gets um, their amount of time. We're going to start off with Larry. So Larry, give me one second here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Atlas um, the Atlas Cement Museum before we talk more about what's going on for Passport to History Month? Yeah, the museum's been with us since the 1990s. Um, it was created to trace the development of the cement industry in the Lehigh Valley, but particularly to uplift the contributions of the cement industry and the people that worked in it to the creation of our communities. Um, and our museum, begins by tracing that development of cement from David Saylor in Copley when he created the first cement plants in the 1870s. Um, however, his plants couldn't produce large volumes of cement like we do or like we did in the early 1900s. Uh, that changed when a man by the name of Jose Navarro came to Northampton. Actually, Northampton didn't exist. It was Allen Township. And his first plant was built on the west side of the Lehigh River in what is now Whitehall Township. Is this uh, the one, is this the one we should be looking at or? No, he's, that's coming up next. Okay, okay, I'll wait for you. <laughs> that's okay. Um, Navarro built a plant very close to the Lehigh River and didn't have room for expansion. So in 1895, after being in Whitehall for uh, about seven years, he decided to come to the east side of the Lehigh, and there he constructed what would become three different plants in the same setup, and that's the picture you want next. Um, this became the largest cement plant in the world at that time. Uh, these plants, these three plants, were built between 1895 and 1904. The plants could produce 10 million barrels of cement compared to the very low production that Sailor had in Copley because of vertical kills that were used in that time frame, So the founder of the Atlas was a man by the name of Jose Navarro, and it was his innovation of using horizontal rotary kills to create the production capabilities that he had with these three plants. Uh, in order to operate them, though, in a non-technical era, you needed a lot of people. And when you had three plants operating, they had 5,000 employees. Now, 5,000 employees were not available to them in Northampton. There just weren't that many people back then. And so what they did was they went to Eastern Europe and they recruited people to come and work in the factories. Uh, 
when these people from Europe passed the Statue of Liberty and came to Northampton, they brought with them a lot of their old background, including um, their religion. And Northampton now homes or became the home of six ethnic churches that all represented cultures of Eastern Europe. Uh, and in one section of what is now Northampton, there are three churches here within a block. Uh, and the other three were spread throughout the borough. But this one street, Newport Avenue in Northampton, is really the center of the immigrant population when they got here. And we're looking at uh, St. John's Ukrainian Church? This is St. John the Baptist Ukrainian Greek Catholic okay. Church. Uh, directly down the street would be Queenship of Mary, which started out as Our Lady of Hungary. And below that, in the same block, would be the Assumption of Blessed Virgin Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Um, these people had a tremendous impact, not just in the religion of the community, but also in the creation of Northampton. When the cement plant moved here in 1895, it was founded in what was then Allen Township. And it didn't really become a borough until after the census of 1900. There were three small villages in Allen Township all along the Lehigh River. And those three villages contained enough people once these immigrants came to work in the cement plants at the Atlas. And also another one called the Lawrence Portland Cement Company, which was also in Northampton. These immigrants who came here gave them the necessary population to charter as a borough. And they became a borough under Pennsylvania law, initially having a name of alliance, but they were forced to change the name when the government of the United States would not give them a post office because an alliance post office already existed in Pennsylvania. And it was before zip codes. So they had to change their name and they chose Northampton. Interesting. There's also a thriving business community that evolved in Northampton. Um, Beginning in the early 1900s, when all of these immigrants came, they weren't able to do the farming and husbandry that they did back in Eastern Europe. They were working long hours in the cement plant. There were two shifts, one 14-hour shift at night and one 10-hour shift during the day. There were very few days off. The families would have gardens in the backyard rather than grass, and they needed some place to buy goods. And a thriving business community began and this was the, the cornerstone of that business community. It was created in 1910. It was known as Miller's Department Store. And it was the center hub of the main street in Northampton and all of the businesses that created on either side of it, including the famous Roxy Theater, which I should have put a picture in of, uh, because probably many people know Northampton today because of the Roxy. Uh, it was just there last week with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the $3 tickets still. Yes, so, it's, like it's wonderful. Can't believe it. Mm -hmm. um, the business community was so extensive that the borough actually bought property behind the business district and created parking lots with free parking for up to 1,000 cars. And the only thing that put the business district out of business was the malls. And now the malls are going out of business too. Let's call Amazon. Um, inside the museum, our, our favorite piece that tells our story and evolution is the mural that was done by Roger Firestone. It covers the area from the Indians down in the lower corner where you see a blockhouse that was a protective device to protect the grist mill from an Indian attack in 1756. And it tells the story of the people that worked here at the very top of the mural. You can see images of people that actually worked at the Atlas and we know Every one of them has been identified who they are. We've identified and placed a memorial list in the hall coming into the museum of more than 2,300 names of people who worked at these plants uh, over the years between 1895 and uh, 1982. Um, but there were no company records, so we don't have the 5,000, but we put up over 2,300 names. Uh, there are several cement plants that still operate in the Lehigh Valley, but their numbers are greatly reduced. The schools of Northampton actually took on and identified as concrete kids. And it's concrete spelled with a K. 
And a lot of people ask questions about that spelling, but it's because of the strength of the industry and the fact that most of the immigrants and locals shared a common dialect in Pennsylvania Dutch or German. So the concrete is spelled with a German spelling and that makes concrete kids. The museum is open the second and fourth Sundays of each month from May on through uh, September. And we do a lot of private tours by appointments as well as school programs. Uh, for Passport to History, we are open on Saturday, uh, July 23rd from 10 to four and Sunday, July 24th from noon to four and visitors are always free. There's no charge to visit our museum. Larry, thank you so much. That I learned a lot just in that short uh, presentation. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, thank you so much. And, and again, we dropped the link in the chat. So for people who want to check it out, and let's stick around. But we got to keep going. We're gonna uh, we'll swing back to you at the end. But we're gonna go now to Stephanie Tashner with the White Hall uh, His Historical Preservation Society. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of photos to go through. So. Um, first of all, I want to make sure that people have the website available, which is whitehallhistoricalsociety.org. And now I'm going to turn it over to you and bring in our, well, if you want to tell us a little bit more about the Historical Society to begin, and then we can start with the photo. Okay, thank you, George. Um, uh, the Whitehall Historical Preservation Society was named and incorporated in 1984 to provide planning, funding, management, and general oversight for the advancement and preservation of uh, Whitehall Township heritage. Um, we are, uh, the society is home to the Helford Springs Grist Mill and the Peter Grimm House, which is located in Whitehall Township on uh, 501 and 506 Mickley Road. Uh, we will be open for Passport to History this Saturday, July 23rd from 10 to 2 and the following weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, July 30th and 31st from 10 to 4. Um, there will be an array of activities for everyone of all ages to enjoy. Um, in the mill, uh, we will be offering a self-guided tour. Um, and uh, on the first floor is a timeline detailing important events within Whitehall Township and that of the grist mill, the Grimm House, the Grimm family and the Helfrich family, uh, starting with the um, establishment of Whitehall Township in 1753 and um, continuing into the 21st century. Uh, there is a short video available to watch, which explains how the grist mill once operated um, and provides a brief history about uh, the families who owned it. Uh, if you can go to photo B, um, the uh, on display is an operational scale model of the Helford Springs grist mill as it would have appeared in the 1800s. On the second floor of the mill is our museum. Um, the walls are displayed with signage and uh, murals um, detailing the growth and development of Whitehall Township from its early agricultural industry uh, to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution with the uh, establishment of the Thomas Iron Company in Hockandaqua, uh, which then led uh, to the construction of the Ironton Railroad. And this is uh, one of the displays that we have on our walls uh, referring to the Ironton Railroad, and it gives a detailed history of that. Um, with the construction of the railroad, um, it was found that uh, an abundance of limestone was discovered and limestone is a product needed to make cement. Uh, so um, with this discovery, uh, Whitehall soon do was dotted with several cement mills along the Ironton Railroad. And uh, there is one mill in Whitehall Township that remains in business and is known to be uh, the oldest running cement mill in the United States. And that is the Lafarge Cement Company located in cement. Um, the Lehigh Valley uh, dairy uh, played a significant role um, in the development of the township and employed many um, of our locals and provided a good uh, tax compensation. Um, it produced high grade, a high grade product at a reasonable price to the user and a reasonable payment to the farmer. And that was um, one of its major parts for its success. 
Um, in the late 60s, um, the retail industry began with the Whitehall um, in Whitehall Township with the development of the Whitehall Mall. And 10 years later, the Lehigh Valley Mall along MacArthur Road. Uh, this stretch of highway was dubbed the Golden Strip of the Lehigh Valley. Um, a timeline of the many stores along this thoroughfare showcased, um, as is what um, a lot of uh, the uh, signage and murals uh, indicate from what I've just talked about, you'll see in our museum. Um, so for your entertainment also uh, during the Passport to History um, days that were open, uh, we'll, we have a what the heck is it uh, table item uh, for you to guess what uh, the use of these items were or the name of the items. Um, so uh, these are Can just- Can I guess what this is? is? Is it like, is it a shoehorn of some? No, um, <laughs> that might be the, the one, uh, the bottom end is a flat, like a flattened spoon. And the other okay. end is like a, um, kind of looks like a spoon, a small spoon. And it- Is uh, it a spoon? Well, sort of, it's, it's used particularly for something particular. Uh, in the medical field. Oh boy, I don't. Maybe I don't want to know. Is it? I hope it. What is it? No. Well, they the flattened end crushed the pills, oh. and the other end scooped the medicine. Oh, okay. So it's like a for a pharmacist. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have another one, right? Correct. This is for uh, making leather, leather products. I don't no. know. No. No. Uh, uh, clue is for gardening. Gardening is it's too big to make like a hole. I don't know. Would it be it's, to make a hole of some sort in the yes, ground? Yes, yes, for bulbs to okay. dig in the ground, uh, put a hole in the ground, and then you drop your bulb in. Um, the bottom though. part is made of steel, and the top part is made of wood. Interesting. Um, we also have uh, a, a scavenger hunt. Um, available if you wish to um, find, uh, you know, challenge yourself uh, with three different skill levels. Uh, for the um, uh, young uh, elementary school, we, it's a pictorial scavenger hunt where they have to go around finding pictures of um, things in the pictures, such as um, I'm going to uh, say a rug beater. And then once they find all the items, then they have to match it up with what we use currently today for that particular product that was used years ago. And that would be a sweeper. So, <clears throat> and then uh, the other uh, levels of scavenger hunt are a series of questions where you go around reading the signage and to find the answers. Um, we also have the uh, Whitehall Babbles uh, for, excuse me, for sale. It's a fundraiser. If you want to go to the flower and the um, the there uh, the baubles are ornaments made out of uh, materials found in nature, such as seeds, grass, teasel, um, money plant, pine cones, and um, we have a gentleman that goes around uh, the area and collects these things and actually grows some of the things and he cleans them and glues them together and makes these um, beautiful ornaments. So we'll have those available for sale um, also. And once you're done exploring the uh, grist mill, you can go across the street and um, to our Peter Grimm house. And uh, those will be, uh, there's a guided tour within the house. Um, the house was built in 1834. And um, the gentleman um, who also made the baubles uh, will uh, give you a guided tour uh, explaining the structural details of the house and how the family uh, once lived. Um, there's some a few of the things you might see in the house and how it might be set up. So, um, uh, also uh, for your enjoyment on the Grim House lawn on Saturday, July 30th, the 153rd Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry Regiment will be there presenting a living history of a civil war. So of a Civil War, war soldier, uh, say that 10 times. Um, they do demonstrations, maneuvers, storytelling, um, all can be discovered. They love you asking them questions, um, such as uh, what they ate for their meals, um, 
what wars they fought in, may have fought in, and uh, what hardships they had to endure besides um, besides uh, bullets being shot at them. But uh, um, so um, they'll be there on the Grim House lawn on uh, July 30th. And uh, also, um, we have a, uh, a garden adjacent to the Grimm House. Uh, it's a public walkthrough garden uh, for your enjoyment. Flowers, plants, and shrubs bloom throughout the spring and summer. However, the peak season is in mid-August to September. And it's open from dawn till dusk for you to uh, stroll through at your leisure. Um, so we hope that you will stop by um, for a visit. And you could check out our website uh, for other activities and events that we have going on throughout the year. Um, and uh, George put up there, whitehallhistoricalsociety.org, or email us at uh, whps at verizon.net. All right, thank you so much. The uh, the whole that mall area is really fascinating to me, like the the industry and buildup of that. So. I guess that's a conversation for another day, but that is definitely, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Stephanie Tashner uh, with the Whitehall Historic Preservation Society. Thank you so much. We must keep moving on. Um, <laughs> next up, we have Megan Pildes with the National Museum of Industrial History. Let's move over to your tab. Megan, hello. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Can you, I think a lot of us are familiar with the museum, but can you kind of tell us a little bit more about it for those who aren't as familiar? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, so National Museum of Industrial History is located on 2nd Street in South Bethlehem. We opened in 2016. Um, we're one of the first Smithsonian affiliate museums and we essentially tell the stories of the people, machines and ideas that transformed our uh, nation into an industrial superpower. And so during um, Passport to History Month on the 30th and 31st of July, we will be free admission from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, but generally, we are open Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 5. Um, right now on view, our um, temporary exhibit is the works of a mechanical genius, the legacy of John Fritz. That's on view through October. Um, John Fritz was the general superintendent and chief engineer of what was then the Bethlehem Iron Company. Um, so that was like 1860 to 1893. And, you know, he's touted as one of the founders of the American steel industry, an incredibly innovative thinker, self-made man. Um, and it's just kind of a great and inspiring story that is also you know, really explains why the Bethlehem Steel site is so important historically and even through the present day. Um, in 2021, summer 2021, we launched um, Foundry Park, which you can see up on the screen there. Uh, it's our new outdoor artifact park. It features the Air Products Pavilion where we can do demonstrations, performances, gatherings. You'll see right down the center, the railroad track and our 1941 Whitcomb um, locomotive. So that was a Bethlehem steel narrow gauge locomotive that is now restored to working order. And I, let's see, first and third Sundays um, from April through October, weather permitting, we do a locomotive experience. You can go on our website and sign up for a time slot and ride the train and learn all about its history. Um, we also on in Foundry Park, you will see an entire artifact display. Um, we do lots of live demonstrations out there. And one of our favorite things is Tug, our Bethlehem Steel tow tractor, which um, We've recently published a children's book with Bethlehem Area Public Library about Tug. So you can always come. He lives on the plaza. You can come by anytime and take a picture with Tug. Um, kids programming is really um, important for us. We are free every Sunday of the year for youth 12 and under um, when accompanied by an adult. We have 
lots of special programming for kids uh, that goes on throughout the year. The next two coming up are uh, metal melting for kids on August 7th. So they can come out and do a little melting, make their own takeaway souvenir. And the hands-on history program, which we're doing with Bethlehem Area Public Library. Uh, we can come out, meet Tug, read the storybook, and that is August 11th. Um, we have lots of lectures, we have demonstrations, we have a new mobile walking tour of the site and mobile tours of the interior exhibits of the museum. Um, and then in October, we will have Steel Weekend. That's October 15th and 16th. Um, it's an incredible gathering. We have former steel workers. We have partners from all over the Lehigh Valley and beyond. Uh, Baltimore Museum of Industries coming out. It's lectures, demonstrations, steel workers reunion, uh, pop-up exhibits, documentary film screenings, all kinds of great stuff, kids programs as well. And so I hope everyone gets a chance to come out and check those out. But in general, um, you can always visit our website at nmih.org. That has our whole events calendar. You can see a little bit more in depth about our current exhibit and um, uh, go through our photo archive collection, uh, look at our education programs, school field trips, uh, the works. You had me at metal melting for kids. Is there an age limit on that? I have a five-year-old who would yes. love it. Yeah, <laughs> my uh, I would allow my six and eight-year-olds to do it. Okay. So uh, okay. it is very, she's all, she'll very be six well. In a couple days. Supervised. Well, I'm putting Perfect. that on my calendar. Uh, I think we're going to yes. be there for that. There's so much going on. There. The campus yes. looks incredible, and Tug is a lot of fun too. Megan mm -hmm. from National Museum of Industrial History, thank you so much for uh, joining thank us you. this evening. And, and stick with us. We have one more last, but certainly not least. Let me move this out of the way here. Beth, with the Schwegfelter Library and Heritage Center. Oh, let me make sure I uh, unmute you. Uh, Beth, thank you so much again for, for joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Schwegfelter Library and, and Heritage Center, and then we'll go into a, a little presentation that you have for uh, Leah Valley Passport to History Month. Sure. Thanks for having us. And it's, I know, a mouthful. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so one of the first things to explain is what is a Schwenkfelder? Um, you know, where does our name come from? And then uh, the second thing to explain is why are we part of the Lehigh Valley? Because we're located in Pennsburg off of Route 29. So in terms of a Schwenkfelder, uh, there was a man, Caspar Schwenkfeld, who lived at the time of the Protestant Reformation in the early 1500s. And he, like many others at the time, had a particular um, theology he put forward for how to uh, worship. And people followed him, and they became known as Schwenkfelders. Uh, 200 years went by, and these people were in East, what's today Eastern Germany and Poland. And they were being persecuted for uh, their religion, and uh, they were having economic difficulties because of that. And it was suggested that they come to Pennsylvania for the tolerance here. Between 1731 and 1737, about 200 Schwenkfelders came to Philadelphia and settled. And this gets to the second question. They settled in what today we would call Germantown, uh, up through what is today Montgomery County, into Lower Lehigh County. And so that's um, how we get started with that, or answer those uh, questions. So if we can go to the first slide, um, just tell you a little bit more about um, the museum itself. It's actually a research library, archive, and museum. The first building on the site, which would be what you see on the left side of the screen, was built in 1950. And the most recent is the barn that you see in the back. That's a reconstruction of a barn that we moved here uh, from about 20 miles away. It's an 1826 Pennsylvania bank barn. And it really, um, between those two ends, speaks a lot to what we're about. Our mission is to uh, share the heritage of the Schwenkfelders in particular, but it's also broader to be a regional history center for this area. Uh, we're kind of a four corners of Montgomery, 
Bucks, Berks, and Lehigh counties. And that's an area that until very recently was agricultural. And so we talk about what was life like in the 18 and early 1900s for people in particular living on farms. So we have a very large collection that way. So as I said, uh, one of the uh... Oh no, Beth, we might have we might have lost Beth. I don't know. Stephanie, can you hear Beth? No. Oh no. I unfortunately I think Beth has a connection issue. So I want to make sure Beth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot you out and then try to come back in. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. We're not in a rush. Uh, I want to <laughs> make sure we were getting to. Uh, we'll see if she, if, she, if she comes back in. But in the meantime, it's, I love talking about Leah Valley Passport to History Month because it's so... You know, sometimes you think, oh, I got to go to Gettysburg or I have to go to some of these other places that are outside of the Lehigh Valley to, you know, get that historical uh, perspective. When you look at even what Larry was talking about, the fact that, you know, those communities were built by immigrants and and some, some of the cement that built the, the Lehigh Valley, a lot of the cement that built the Lehigh, Lehigh Valley was there. It's just so fascinating to know you don't have to go far. I feel bad that I've never been in that museum. And um it's just, it's interesting to know that we have it. The lvhistory.org um, website is fabulous. It brings everybody together in one place. And um, yeah, we can make it a commercial for this at, the, <laughs> at, at this point. If you go here and click on the Passport to History Month uh, link, it's just right up at the top, um, you can go through what's going on. So if we go down to where we are now, you can see you know, what's coming up for weekend four, which is what we're getting into. Um, I see a couple of you on here, of course, Atlas Cement Company and Whitehall Township as well. So just going in here, if you're like, hey, I, I'm not sure what I want to do uh, for Leah Valley Passport to History Month, or maybe you feel like, wow, it's overwhelming. I, I don't know where to start. Going to lvhistory.org is a great place to do that because then you can just go through one by one and hey, it's a good day to get to Emmaus, you know? <laughs> so you have the opportunity to to look at the places that are uh, participating. And, and on, you know, on, I, sorry. No, go ahead. On this site, it'll um, you can go right to the each particular um, historical yep. society's website as well. If the, if you don't if you can't make it through Passport to History Month, you can find out when they're open or um, you know have different events scheduled throughout the year. So, you know, the, the... Yeah, look at this. This is even better. If you click on the schedule, <laughs> I didn't even know this, but yeah, it gives you a map of, wow, look at, these are all the spots. So, right. um, you know, for those looking for something to do, this is the month, you know, that you definitely want to get out there and to get to some of these uh, different venues. Um, well, I want to, you know, make sure that we're waiting for Beth. I have a feeling there may be some technical difficulties there. So I still want to make sure that we go through her presentation here. What, what I'm very happy about is that she was able to talk about the, the history and the Lehigh Valley um, connections and um, obviously to give the website as well. Uh, so when I go through here, this is a description of what's going on, uh, I would imagine, this Saturday, which is great. So there's a weekend theme of raw product to consumer goods. On Saturday, cow to dairy items. I think that's dairy. Wheat to pretzels with a pretzel tasting for one participant. So there's a lot of fun stuff to check out there on Saturday. And Sunday is Sheep Day, which is exciting. Noon to 4 p.m. Um, spinning demonstrations by Charlotte Puff. Use and lambs to pet and walk thanks to Valais at Grateful Acres. So I, I, I want to make sure that we, we give time to Schwegfelter as well and know that they have some really fun events going on that include you know, uh, a uh, petting zoo of sorts and, of course, learning more about their website. So, again, I, I, uh, I would imagine that Beth is having some difficulties, so I want to thank you guys again. I want to thank Beth again, and I'm glad that we were still able to go through her presentation and tell everybody about that wonderful organization. And thank you guys for taking the time out this evening to tell us more 
Oh, wait, Beth is back. Hey. Hey, you made it? I made it. I I'm <laughs> so sorry about that. No, no, I, I was giving it. your presentation for you. So let, now you're going to give it, and we'll see how much better it is. We I'm were, I think we are at slide two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you can read uh, also what it is about. And that is that because our collection includes things from the Lehigh Valley is part of why we're part of this great program. And um, the coverlet tells you right on it that it's from the Lehigh Valley. Um, one of the activities this weekend is going to be a gallery hunt uh, through the galleries to find all the Lehigh Valley items that are on display. Um, so if we can move ahead I, to the next slide then. So this weekend is generally though themed down on the farm. Uh, which goes back to my talking about how we're a museum of local history and particularly the agricultural heritage of the area. Um, so we're going to be looking a lot at sort of the, the raw product and then the final consumer good. On Saturday, our emphasis particularly will be on milk and dairy products and on wheat to pretzels. And the picture is of one of the activities, which is a pretzel tasting of different pretzels made in southeastern Pennsylvania. And there will be prizes. Um, as well. And there will be barn tours in that reconstructed barn I showed you before. There will be craft activities and a whole variety of different kinds of gallery hunts going on. And then the last slide is the one about Sunday. Our theme that day is really sheep to blanket or wool to blanket. And uh, we will, for that, continue to have barn tours and crafts, but we also will have uh, Charlotte Puff here, who is a spinner, demonstrating that. And we are really excited and hoping it's not too hot to also have uh, the sheep here. We'll have ewes and uh, lambs that can be pet and walked on leashes. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And we really hope people will come out. We're this weekend, the 23rd and 24th, but in fact, um, we're open Tuesday through Sunday generally. We're um, free admission always, and you can get more details on our website, which is schwankfelder.org. So did I do close to what you did, George, or vice versa? Okay, I'm muted. Um, you're going to have to watch it back and watch my portion there. Steph, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> but Great. no, I think it, it turned out good. Bottom line here, I have some activities. I can walk sheep and have my kid play with molten metal. So we're looking forward to an exciting um history month in the lehigh valley and i want to thank you guys again for taking your time out this is a lot of fun and i i learned some stuff today and, and hopefully you're going to be able to do more during lehigh valley passport to history month thank you george okay. thanks so thank much. you and thank you everybody who is watching at home you guys sit tight for a second uh, we are gonna finish our live be sure to uh, visit lvhistory.org for more information on lehigh valley passport to history month and we'll catch you next month thank you very much thanks. see ya